So some of the practical design elements that we incorporate in our SCADA systems include a sense of organization, providing data with context, and including industry-specific functionality. Organization of data is crucial. We want visual features to be consistent, grouped into logical areas based on either operational importance and common interaction, or the source of the data, and sometimes both. We try to avoid the situation where the user asks, what did I click to get here, or where is this data coming from? For organization, we often apply a hierarchy to the window navigation with no more than two layers, and we want to keep that accessible at all times. For context, we want to ensure that the user has ready access to how the data is changing, what the data means, or what normal is. And for features, we make sure we understand the application and how the system is being monitored to operate. We speak to the operators to find out what their normal activities are and what information they need most frequently. Next, I'll show some of the ways we try to be organized. For complex systems, we usually implement a tree-style navigation structure. This immediately provides all the options and allows the user to see where they are. The example on the right groups windows by usage for a 70 solar field data acquisition system. Each of these sites has around five to seven windows associated with them. This tree allows filtering the window list by typing in part of the name, and it dynamically changes to show only those sites to which the user has allowed access. The image in the middle shows the sites folder expanded. Nearly all of those windows are shared between the sites using templates and scripting to automate their configuration. To the right of that, we have a navigation tree for a large electrical system for a multi-tower apartment complex, which generates all of its own electricity isolated from the national grid. Here we see windows grouped into major areas, including alarming, data logging, generation systems, and switchgear which shows the electrical distribution system and power flows to buildings. We also have network and SCADA system monitoring. Navigation features inside of a window can be restricted, keeping the user within the same window when possible. A tab interface can be used to indicate a hierarchy within a given context. This screen allows selecting the performance model for an inverter section and then swapping between the model's data, its configuration, alarm settings, and solar panel setup. It's also important to be relationally organized within your screens. You want to guide your user's eyes to important information. The earlier slide showed a heat map where your eyes tend to land. We tend to look to the top left to see where we are or where we should start and move down and right for more information. This detail screen shows three columns. The first is a small overall representation of a section of an electrical switchgear. The second column displays information about the incoming and outgoing ends to that bus, and the third shows individual metering and protection devices for each output feeder from the bus. It's also incredibly helpful to show context along with the data to provide useful information. This might mean using a pre-built set of trends to allow comparison of related data, like seen on the top left. On the top right, we're using a numerical display which provides a tag name detail about where the data is coming from at the engineering units and a spark line of what the measurement has been doing for the last few hours and an analog indicator showing how far away we are from a problem. These are each templates composed of other templates to minimize setup time. And finally, we have a solar combiner box monitor on the bottom, which highlights inputs which are underproducing with a circle. And it visually shows the average input current against each input's value. The acceptable deviation range is also shown as a gray band. Another way of showing data in context and reducing navigational complexity is to allow a user to stay within a single screen, selecting between alternate views. When clicking the smaller KPI-like templates on the left, the larger template on the right changes to show the detail for that device. And the trend on the bottom updates to graph that. There's also an image of the meter that changes to represent the one that is on site. This keeps with the navigation towards the left and increasing detail towards the right and bottom. Industry-specific functionality can be used to support the operational needs of the customer or to handle specific challenges in that industry. On the top, we see a KPI banner, which is always at the top of the screen, showing all the vital data points for the operation of a landfill gas to energy plant. On the bottom left, 
we developed a maintenance interval tracking system, which allows the operators to create grouped maintenance items, which can alert on a tag data based interval, such as engine run hours, or a calendar time elapsed, or both. This generates reports for maintenance records as well. For the large 70 plus solar field system, we can experience a large number of nuisance alarms as the sun goes down or comes up. We implemented a system which allows entering the latitude and longitude for the site to calculate sunrise and sunset times, combined with a dead band after sunrise and before sunset to suppress alarms to ensure that alarms received are actually important enough to act on. Ignition provides all the tools needed to provide useful graphical and numerical displays that can show the importance and meaning of the data and to create nearly any kind of application.